Okay, here we are again, sat down for a change. Ah, oh, it makes a change, it's nice though. I think this is the future of wedding photography from the armchair. Anyway, it's still raining, no surprise there. Okay, and on my long lens, what we're gonna do here, we just put one speed light behind them. So one flash gun behind them, that's all we're working with, okay? We're gonna use the ambient light in the room to reflect back nicely, create lots of warmth. That's why I've kept my ISO up to 400. All right, I'm at 200th of a second, because what we're trying to do is darken down the background as much as we can as well, as well as trying to keep some of this bright ambience from these chandeliers and the two lamps that are on either side. Now, it's also because it's still raining, we've popped a flash gun behind them, so that's the one speed light that we're using. We don't always have to have the light going at the subject. Quite often I will put the light, the main light, behind the subject, especially when it's raining, as we've seen on the other shot, it can be really cool. So mixing everything together, absolutely fantastic. So. 3.2 is my aperture of choice. I'm going to go full zoom on my 7200, nicely compress that depth of field. We're going to get a little bit of flash coming through the shoes as well because it's a shorter dress, flash behind, shorter dress, nice heels, always looks really cool. Just a quick one on white balance now. Not talked about it too much over the process of what we've been doing today, but I pretty much never change it when I'm using my flash. Auto white balance, for me anyway, is pretty spot on. Sometimes I'll do a custom white balance, sometimes I'll do a Kelvin scale, I'll input my own Kelvin into that to see what we have to do. But nine times out of ten, you haven't got time to change it at a wedding, we're going to keep it on auto white balance. Okay, let's try it. Okay. That's pretty nice. I want to slow down my shutter speed, just a touch to 200. That's good. It's still raining just about, so we're just about getting that light coming through behind them. I'm going to zoom out a little bit, get the full door frame in, make sure my focus is nice and on the face. Again, because they're backlit, I'm locking my red central focusing square right on their noses, and that's what's giving me the shot being sharp. Just trying to make sure it's balanced nice and parallel. Just taking my time. That looks pretty sweet. I'm just going to do a nice zoom shot. Still shooting there. They're still there together. That's cool. One more. So I've made sure that that back flash is there, but we're hiding it with the subject so we're not seeing the power of it. We're just seeing it coming through the shoes. We've made sure that the speed light itself is in a vertical orientation. It's not horizontal, we've just flipped it so it's vertical. We just put it, well, let me see, whatever. 10 feet behind the subject, we're getting a nice blast of light coming through. And so I've started off as far away from the subject as I can. That gives me two, three, four, five opportunities to get different feeling shots. So the more I zoom, the more I'm just going to crop them into the background of, of what's behind them, i.e. the trees. The more I zoom back, then I'll start to get the chandelier in and then maybe even the walls here with the clock on and the door frame itself. Okay, so we're just going to come a little bit closer, do a couple more shots here. That's it. That's really nice. The rain's just stopping a little bit. And again, you don't need it to be raining for this kind of shot, it's just, it just adds to it. Yeah, it's still coming down. I like it personally better when we get more of the scene in, because this is a real good page, good page filler of a shot. 